Most generally, you're gonna to wanna to start with the meat or the beef of the burger patty. The reason being is because Hey everyone, Joel Hansen here, and if you're not familiar who I am, so I am a competitive eater, professional eater, and when it comes to food challenges, let's just say I do not too bad. I actually have over 250 food challenge wins, and today we're gonna to talk about how you can get your first food challenge win, specifically how you can beat a burger challenge. Hopefully you can get free food, maybe you can get money, cash prizes, all the rewards coming with beating a burger challenge. So this kind of burger challenge would be a restaurant hosted burger challenge, kind of like you would see in like Man Vs. Food. So if you're familiar with that food challenge or kind of that show, it would be like you come on in, you eat this big burger, you get it for free, maybe again you get cash or all the great prizes and rewards. So today we're going to talk about how you can actually beat that challenge and get free food and money. So today we're going to go through first what you need to know about the challenge before you attempt it. We're gonna talk about the strategy of actually how to beat the challenge, and then we're gonna talk about how to perform during the challenge. Step one, what you need to know about the burger challenge before you try it. The best thing that you can find out about the challenge is how much it weighs, or an approximate weight for the challenge. For example, if it is a five pound burger challenge, or perhaps the restaurant is specific enough that they can tell you it's two pounds of beef, one pound of fries, one pound of toppings. So it'd be a four pound challenge. The more specificity you can get to the weight of the challenge, the better off you will be. The reason being is because if the overall burger challenge, let's say the burger and there's fries with it, combined weigh five pounds and you cannot eat five pounds, unfortunately, I'm sorry, there's absolutely no way you're gonna be able to complete it. You have to have the stomach capacity to match the weight of the challenge. There's a little bit of a benefit with burger challenges. If the place is giving you a uncooked weight, the patty is going to lose some weight cooking. So let's use our example. The burger challenge has two pounds of beef, one pound of fries, one pound of toppings and bun. Again, that should weigh four pounds. But after that beef is cooked, the challenge is probably gonna weigh closer to maybe like three and a half, maybe three and a quarter. Ground beef can lose a lot of weight, so this can be to your advantage. That being said, it still stands. If you cannot eat five pounds of food, you won't be able to eat a five pound burger challenge. Easiest way to test this out if you don't wanna risk it for the biscuit, or you know, go actually into the restaurant and just try the challenge, you wanna save your money. Take some easy convenience foods at home. I'd recommend probably like vegetables, maybe like watermelon and like frozen vegetables or salad or something. Weigh out five pounds of it, see if you can eat it. If you can eat it, guess what? You can eat five pounds of food. And that would ultimately be your capacity and you know that you could successfully and confidently do a five pound burger challenge. So now when it comes to strategy, let's get into the video here. You want to start with the items which are either going to get cold and less palatable, so less enjoyable to eat or harder to eat, and or the items that you dislike. For an example, if your burger challenge has pickles on it and you very much dislike pickles, eat those first. Because as the time goes on, it's only gonna get harder to eat things, and if you don't like them, it's gonna be much, much, much harder. Most generally, you're gonna to wanna to start with the meat or the beef of the burger patty. The reason being is because it's easier to eat beef while it's hot, while it's juicy, while it's more enjoyable, rather than if it's cold. Whereas the bun is likely gonna be the same, or essentially the same, whether you eat it right when the burger hits the table, or 10, 20 minutes later. Another thing I recommend is making sure the food cools off enough to start eating. You don't wanna let it get cold, but you don't want it to be so hot that you can't even eat anything. So ultimately, let's get to this video. So as we see here, um, essentially, so this is called the Highway 55 Burger Challenge. This is a very classic challenge, and actually may be a challenge that a lot of you are hoping to attempt. I would definitely recommend this as a beginner challenge. So as you can see me on the right hand side, I am starting with the beef. So I opened up my burger and we are essentially diving into the beef starting with the patties. Again, I'm eating the patties because they are going to be harder or less enjoyable to eat once they are cooled off. Now I myself really enjoy the flavor of ketchup and it also adds a little bit of lubricity or like a little extra moisture kind of slipperiness to the meat. So I am myself dipping my burgers into ketchup. 
However, this may be a tool that you might want to wait till later on in the challenge, um, just as having that extra flavor or that new flavor is gonna be stimulating to your palate, to your flavors, and may make it easier um, if you start to struggle in the end. So this Highway 55 Burger Challenge is actually offered at pretty much all the Highway 55 locations. You just go ahead and order it. It is about 55 ounces of beef, um, so like, and I think it comes in about seven patties, and then you have to have a little side, whether it be fries or tater tots, or even tater tots in this case. So, and again, the fries, same thing. I figure the tater tots for myself, it's not gonna make too much difference whether they sit there for 10, 20 minutes, rather than eating them at the beginning. So I'd rather get through the beef, which I know will be less enjoyable if I let it sit first. So as I continually, I go through the patties, and I know confidently that I have my capacity to eat this challenge. So as long as you also know you have the capacity to eat this challenge, there's no issue. So continually again, going through the beef, eating that first, I was also able to pretty much eat my vegetables in the same bite as the beef. However, again, play that out as you will. I enjoy vegetables, so whether I ate them at the beginning or the end, to me, it doesn't really matter. So now as I get to the end of my um, burger, I similarly have my buns and I have like pretty much a patty left. So at this point, some people may choose to just make it into a normal burger and eat it. I find it's actually easier to eat them separate. Now for my bottom bun, which is stuck on this uh, patty here, I'm just gonna eat that together, but I still have a preference of eating it separate. It's just easier to eat. It's easier to chew when it's not, uh, when the bun and the burger is not combined, because you don't have the different textures. Um, a bun often requiring more liquid, which actually absorbs liquid, where the meat doesn't absorb liquid. So that's definitely what I'd recommend. So that was kind of the food approach to the strategy. A few other tips I'm, I would recommend is use your liquids sparingly. I didn't use much liquids throughout this challenge because we want to ensure we have the stomach capacity. If you think you're barely going to have enough capacity, definitely go lighter on the liquids. Definitely eat enough that you're eating safely, you're able to swallow your food because your liquids are going to help you swallow your food, but don't overly indulge in them. Don't be taking these big massive gulps if you don't have to. Save that for if you really need to rush at the end, um, whereas you know that's the only time you're really gonna you should hopefully be needing to take these great big gulps. Um, otherwise you should be able to you know, take sips, little bits as required. Then we come to our fries or to our side. Again, not all burger challenges are gonna have a side, but a lot of them do have french fries or in this case a tater tot side. So then again, I'm just eating the tater tots. Same thing, chewing them comfortably. I'm not chewing them to an absolute mush that just takes extra time. I'm uh, not barely chewing them where I need a lot of liquid to swallow it down. It's kind of a happy medium. Find what's happy medium where it's comfortable to swallow. But again, don't waste too much time over chewing and don't, uh, let's say, have to use overly large amounts of liquid from under chewing. So continuing with the performance of the burger challenge, while we already kind of got into it a little bit talking about chewing, a little bit about beverages, let's talk further about strategies to help us perform. So we talked about how not to overuse liquids. And while that is a strategy, our liquids can also help us perform. I would recommend starting off with water. Start with your water. You can either have ice or no ice, whatever is your preference, but without ice it's probably gonna be easier to drink. And then as you get later into the challenge and you start to feel full or you start to feel like not eating anymore because your body eventually will want to stop eating once you eat a lot of food, use a flavored beverage. Using a flavored beverage can help kind of, let's say, excite your taste buds and will ultimately help you actually eat a little bit more. Same goes for ketchup and condiments. I alluded to this earlier on but I would definitely recommend saving your extra condiments, whether it be perhaps mustards or ketchup, mayonnaises, barbecue sauces, whatever you prefer, to later on in the challenge. Again, this new flavor is gonna excite your taste buds and ultimately it's gonna help you be able to eat a little bit more. Because in, let's say, this challenge, after you eat six or seven patties of beef, even though the first two or three or four may be delicious because it's warm, tender, juicy, ground beef with cheese on it, 
you may start to get sick of that flavor. So if you're able to add that ketchup, add a little bit of mayonnaise, a barbecue sauce, whatever it is, it will definitely help excite your mouth, it change things up, and ultimately help you eat a little bit more. It'll make it a little easier on you. Further, now this area can kind of fall a little bit into the strategy and also into uh, aiding your performance, which is picking what you can using smart options, choosing smart options if you have any. Some burger challenges are just like, you get them as you get them. You don't get to pick your toppings, you don't get to pick your sides, etc. But if you do get to pick your toppings, choose toppings that are easy to eat. I'll use an example. In this Highway 55 challenge, I believe I chose ketchup, barbecue sauce, and I think tomato. I threw the tomato in just for fun, but what do you think would be harder if you chose, let's say, fried onions, um, lettuce, and raw onions? Do you think that's going to be easier than if you chose ketchup, mustard, and barbecue sauce? Well, you see, the ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce, not only is it basically like a liquid, remember, but it's going to actually help you. It's going to add moisture to the food, lubricity, and a little bit more flavor, right? A little less chewing. You don't, you got to chew fried onions. you got to chew raw onions. You don't have to chew ketchup. So choose your toppings and your additions wisely. In this challenge, again, we gotta choose between either french fries or tater tots. While I think technically both are probably equivocally hard, choose what you prefer and what you think is gonna be easier. Tater tots are probably a little crispier, but I wanted them for my preference. Other burger challenges in the past, sometimes I've gotta choose my side from anything. So like, it was like french fries, salads, soups. Well, I tell you what, a soup's probably easier than eating french fries or salad, but then perhaps after you talk to the staff, they said that, well, if you go with french fries, the portion is this big, whereas if you choose a salad, the portion is this big, well, then you might be more opt to actually choose the salad. So if you have options for different condiments, toppings, or sides, investigate your options and go from a strategic standpoint. You want to choose what you enjoy and also probably what is the least amount of volume to make it easier on yourself. Last thing, this is only relevant to certain locations worldwide, one being the United States of America. How do you want your burger cooked? Some people prefer to have a well done burger. Some people prefer to have a rare burger. Strategically, probably about a medium is best. You don't want your burger just absolutely cooked so it is has no moisture and it's very, very dry, but you probably don't want it rare, like blue rare, unless that's your preference, but ultimately about a medium. Medium rare gives a lot of extra juice in that burger. The patty should be very soft, very tender, and just fall apart, but ultimately, again, it's only relevant in certain areas. In Canada, you're gonna get a very well done burger. Maybe if you're lucky, maybe if you're lucky, you'll get just a well done burger. Maybe if you're so lucky, you'll get a, what you might call a medium well burger. So again, depends where you are geographically, a lot of the world of what burger is always well done, but in some places you can choose how it's cooked. So I hope that was informative. I can't wait for you to get your first burger challenge win. I can't wait for you to get some free food, some free prizes, maybe some cash, some t-shirts, whatever it may be. Ultimately, I would not actually recommend anybody do a burger challenge, but this is free education. This is informative video, so please do as you will. So that everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was informative. If you like this video, let me know down below, and let me know if there's another type of food challenge you'd like me to dissect and help you to beat. So like, let's say a how-to pizza challenge. So anyway, everybody, thank you so much. I appreciate you. So next time, say happy all day hungry, happy eating. And of course, we have food challenges on my channel coming every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So until next time, have a lovely day. everyone thank you so much for watching today's video i really appreciate it if you click my face right here you can subscribe yes that's right click my face subscribe guys it helps me out it helps you out then you don't miss an upload and hopefully i can meet you when i come to your city also click a video right here i specifically pick two videos yes that's right two videos specifically for you right here so click a video right now get that going and it's going to end so click one quick let's go let's go and have a great day